I have two confessions to make before I get into the review of this Synology RT 6600AX router. Number one, I sometimes don't get as excited for review requests as I do some items and other items, etc. I mean, I got the review for this and I'm like, you know what? I've had a really good experience with Synology NASA's, so why not check it out? Excitement level, probably a three out of 10. Two, I actually did not know that Synology made routers. I'm just throwing that out there, I'm sorry, but that's the thing. This is a first. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about a very surprisingly pleasant and actually, I now highly recommend router from Synology. Now this is the RT6600AX. From the name, as you can imagine, it has a maximum theoretical output of 6,600 megabits per second. Now it uses three radios, 2.4 and two five gigahertz in order to achieve those speeds. So of course you're not gonna get all of that speed in one device. This is just how the modern day routers work. And it is not Wi-Fi 6. E, which is like the latest and greatest and fastest and you know, the thing you can get now that this doesn't have. What this does use, however, is a 5.9 gigahertz frequency, which was recently opened up by the FCC to give you some more speed, less congested. However, a lot of devices don't use it quite yet. So, you know, your mileage may vary. So it gives you all of the frequency trimmings. We're talking the megahertz 20, 40, 80, 80 plus 80 and 160. Built in, it has one gigabyte worth of RAM, four gigs worth of flash, that's for the operating system, which by the way, runs an extremely familiar, because I'm a Synology NAS user, extremely familiar. And I, dare I say, probably one of the simplistic interfaces SRM. Now the SRM OS really does make you feel like you're in a Synology NAS environment. There's little icons. It's a desktop like environment and it really breaks things down to make it as simple and as easy to use as possible. So that to me is a huge selling point and one of the reasons why I can recommend this router. On the back of this router is actually where the magic starts and I say that with a little asterisk. So first and foremost, you get your four one gigabit per second LAN ports, those are yellow. But your WAN port, AKA what you would be plugging into your modem is a 2.5 gigabit per second capable port which is really, really good if you can actually use it type of a deal. I'm a huge fan of making 2.5 gigabits per second a new standard. I like one gig, of course, but 2.5 is two and a half times faster. In the market today, very rarely are you gonna see the option to have two gig or 2.5 gig WAN speeds being fed to your router. So for most people out there, myself included, having a 2.5 gig WAN just really doesn't mean anything, except it's blue and that's kind of cool. The other ones are yellow, so it's like, you know, I don't know where I was going with that. But for those elite members out there that just happen to have a faster than one gigabit connection, now you can do that with this router. Also on the back is a USB port, which is magical. Not for the normal reasons that you would expect. Of course, you can plug in an external drive. You can share that on your network. You can install packages that use that drive to store information. And that, I mean, you can share printers, that sort of thing. I mean, this is nothing new. The USB ports, nothing new. However, I made this discovery because I was absolutely curious. And this is what has got me very excited about this router. And that is, you can plug in an iPhone with a USB cable, turn on your tethering option on your iPhone, and this thing actually has a tab built into the operating system that will use the internet off of your cellular device, AKA your 4T or LTE connection as a backup internet source. Holy freaking bananas. 
I did not know that was a possibility on anything and it is a possibility on this. Now, granted, you are gonna have to make sure that you have the ability to tether with your data plan and you know that could cost you and you could have some limitations. I mean, there's all kinds of things there that you have to consider before you go down this route. But if you use the blue port back there to plug into your main internet source and you hook up a phone, that has a USB cable and you turn on your tethering and your main internet source goes down, it will automatically, with about a 10 to 15 second delay, switch over to using your mobile device's internet. <laughs> That's why I'm excited. That is the primary reason I think that people should be considering this if having an internet connection is a crucial part of your life, whether it's personal or at work. Maybe your personal is your work. I don't know. Backup internet though, gets my nerd juices flowing. But that's only like the side side internet that this thing actually offers because the four yellow ports on the back, there is one port that can act as a fell over WAN. That's right. Not only does it have a main WAN port, but it also can use one of the other ports as a fell over. So hypothetically speaking, if somebody like me got Cox internet and Cox internet went down, but then I also just happen to have Starlink internet plugged into the secondary WAN port, it would automatically fell over to Starlink, which in the future I will be doing something like this. Maybe not with this router because they get Unify and all that other stuff, but still two WAN ports, two failovers or aggregation, depending on how you set it up and then you have a third fell over to an iPhone. Is this a thing on any other router? Please, guys, if you know of any other router that has this option, please link that in the description down below. I looked it up with Unify. Like you can do it with Unify. They have some options to have an LTE and a SIM card and all that other thing, but you have to buy like an extra $200 device in order to get that to work. I mean, it's Unify, what, what do you expect? But with this one, you just need an iPhone cable and an iPhone. Data plan, of course, but. Wow, I feel like I just kind of came right out the gate swinging as to why I'm super excited and I really like this router and that's primarily all of the backups, aggregate, everything you can do with the WAN ports on the back and the USB cables. That is pretty much the biggest excitement part of this router for me. But I will move on to a couple different things that I found with this router. First and foremost, you have a mobile app that you can use on your phone to remotely manage your router, which is pretty cool. Gives you all the basic options. You can create, delete, uh, Wi-Fi networks, you can manage the, I mean, it's, it's a mobile app that gives you full control remotely. So that's pretty cool. Also, if you just happen to have another RT6600AX router and you wanted to create a mesh network, this thing makes it super simple. So you can have one on one side of the house and one on the other side of the house, and you can set up a mesh network in order to extend your coverage. Now, considering this thing cost $300, I do not see that as a financially viable solution. I would just go with access points, you know, that are like 100, 150 bucks, but still it's an option. From what I can tell online, as it sits right now without any updates, uh, it is not compatible with the older versions of Synology routers. So you cannot use, maybe if you're upgrading from an older version to the newer version, you cannot use your old Synology router to add network coverage through this mesh networking capability. Now, maybe that's gonna be a future update where that is possible, but for now, you just have to have two of the exact same routers. And again, $300 a router, you probably can do better off with just some access points. But that really brings me to the coverage and you know, a little bit on the speed as well. Now I primarily use my main computer and my iPhone for the Wi-Fi speed testing. This is just going through speedtest.net. When I'm on my local ISP Cox with Wi-Fi connection, I can usually get seven to 900 on my main desktop computer and get about seven to 800 on my iPhone. Hello cat, no. I don't want you up here. I'm going to use this magical device that you can find in the links below that will scare you off. Cat be gone. However, when connecting to this Synology router with my iPhone and my main computer, doing the test, I was getting like 150, 200 megabits per second. It's kind of weird. Not as fast. I would assume it would have been as fast, but it just was not as fast as I expected. Now I did notice in the management system that it was connecting to the second five gig 
thing, which technically is not as fast. So I feel like maybe there's something there that I might have done wrong. But the one thing that I can say is that I put this upstairs in the middle of my house, basically on my kitchen counter with all the little things pointing up and it had phenomenal service signal everywhere. In every single point of my house, I was able to get connection. I was able to achieve at least 100 megabits per second. So I had very consistent speeds. I got about halfway out to my backyard, halfway out to the front yard before it really dropped off and or lost connection. So when it comes to signal strength, and having one centralized router in your house that can actually feed your entire house, this thing seems to have a very strong signal. I mean, it's got six freaking antennas that make it look like a half spider on crack or something, but hey, they work. To be fair, the TP-Link routers that I used to really like still do. I mean, they look like spiders if you turn them upside down, because anyway. And there's two more things that I really like about this router. One, parental controls, profiles, blocking. I tested this. I was able to create a profile, name it. I could say what I don't want that person or that profile to access. And it did an extremely good job at blocking that. In fact, the reason why I bring this up, you even have the option to create a custom block page just in case you want to, which I did. It was interesting. You, you can create a custom block page. So if you are setting up profiles for children, teenagers, guests, whatever you wanna do, you can have your own custom little don't go there block screen and it's kind of funny. That I think it's funny anyway. Really easy parental controls. Because this is kind of sort of the NAS operating system, you also have a package center that you can go in and you can install other packages. However, it is extremely limited. There's only a few things that you can install, one of which that you cannot install is the Plex Media Server. You have a Synology Media Server. I don't ever foresee myself using that, but there's not a lot of other options that you can install, which was kind of surprising to me. Based off the operating system and how close it is to the Synology operating system, I kind of sort of thought maybe they'd carry over some additional capabilities, especially it's got a four core 1.8 gigahertz processor in there with four gigs of flash uh, memory in there. I kind of thought maybe you'd be able to install more applications. Maybe you will in the future. But for right now, the package center itself is somewhat limiting. And last but not least, one of the great things I like about this is the way you can get everything mounted, get these things up like this, etc. On the back, it makes it super simple to just add this to a wall, which is cool. However you wanna install this, and this is always gonna depend on each uh, person's individual preferences and or installation thing, but you can just set this on a wall, put the screws in there, mount it, set these up, and boom. You're gonna have it at a high point in your house, which would hopefully, hopefully extend your range to some of those harder to reach areas, maybe in your backyard while you're mowing your lawn or the front yard while you're trimming around your trees. And it's just gonna look slick. So it's a minor detail, but I definitely like the way it's designed just because of that. So that's my thoughts on the RT6600AX. I think it is a formidable option for somebody looking for backup internet. If you're into that kind of thing, if you really wanna be able to get online and you wanna be able to use your iPhone as backup when the internet goes down and it may not come back up anytime soon, but oh my God, you have to send that email right away. This is just kind of cool that you can just plug in your phone, tether your internet and get yourself back up and running. All of the other easy to use interface and all that is just like icing on the cake. When it comes to performance, coverage, and backup internet capabilities, automatic failover, those are the big selling points for me. Now this is a brand new router, so the packages could be expanded. There's probably gonna be some changing to the packaging, etc. I will link whatever information I can find in the description down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those in the comments as well. Thank you for watching like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.